Thank you for joining me today. It is a gorgeous day outside. I've thrown open the door to the studio so that we can let in that fresh air and we are going to work on an outside project today. Well, kind of outside. It's gonna start inside and then it will end up outside. <laughs> Our project today is going to be on how you can create your own garden flag from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree? Yes, you can do this very easily. Now, one of the first things you need to know is Dollar Tree does sell garden flag poles. And here is the example of the one I did purchase from Dollar Tree. I will give you a caveat though. The one from Dollar Tree is a little bendy. So keep that in mind when you go to uh, install this in the yard, you stick it down in the ground and you normally will put pressure here to push it down into the ground. However, just be careful. Your strength may be a little bit too much for this pole and you could easily bend it. But as long as you're careful, this makes for an excellent garden flag pole. Now, one of the simplest flag options that I found at Dollar Tree was in the decor section. I went around spring, first of spring, and they had these really cute door decor, all right? So here's an owl and a frog, which I thought were super cute options to hang out as garden flags. And these are easy to decorate. This channel we generally cover embroidery and vinyl and bling, right? Well, both of these options, they're felt. These are made out of felt. So they're very easy to decorate either one of those three ways. So you could easily do embroidery here. Um, you can also do vinyl, the heat press vinyl, where you would press the letters on with your heat transfer or iron. Um, and you also could do bling on here as well. Uh, and it would be really cute to even decorate it with bling if you wanted to without actually putting a message of some sort here. So you could easily put your family name or you could just put welcome. <laughs> and any one of those options would make a really cute garden flag. What I also found to help hang it on the pole because there's no rod pocket are these hooks that normally put ornaments on the trees, the large hooks. And you just stick it in the available cutout slot on the design. And then you just hang it from the pole. Easy as that. So with your message on here, this would turn out to be really adorable. Now I would definitely bend the ornament hooks so that if the wind gets to be a little too severe, it won't fly completely off. So you would definitely want to bend this where it will stay as secured as possible on your flagpole. But wouldn't that be a really cute option out in front of the house of someone who loves owls or one who loves frogs? Even if you don't have an embroidery machine or vinyl or rhinestone, you can go to the checkout line, grab a black Sharpie, and you could put your own message right here, whether a, a monogram drawing it on or a message, easy to do. So there's a couple of different ways you could make a really cute garden flag from Dollar Tree. The other way that I came across to make your own garden flag is a little more involved but a lot more creative and i'm really excited about this so one of the options that i found to make your own garden flag from dollar tree makes dollar tree the absolute best option for this particular project i am talking about placemats from dollar tree these are right at about the same size as your regular garden flag and the dollar tree placemats are really light and thin and they flop around a lot so they'll catch the wind a good bit and make for a gorgeous garden flag now the dollar tree that i went to had uh this yellow it also had this uh, blue placemat, which I believe this is the color placemat for this current season. And I also was able to find this flag with the flowers and butterflies. And I found this option as well with the plant foliage on it. So all four of these are beautiful designs that could easily be adorned in some fashion uh, to create your garden flag, whether it be with a Sharpie writing a large 
letter on the front or it could be embroidering your monogram on here it could be putting a welcome message of some sort on this flag or it could be putting vinyl and or bling on the surface of another. So what we're going to do today is we are actually going to make a couple of garden flags out of the placemats, all right? So we'll do embroidery on one and on the other, what we'll do is some vinyl, okay? Now, one of the first things you want to uh, look at is there's no rod pocket to hang this from your flagpole. Most flags have a pocket on the back that you slide this onto your flagpole with. That's easy to create, right? So what we would do is fold this over an inch and a half and you can straight stitch where there's already a seam to create a rod pocket or simply you can get some stitch witchery or hem tape and you can place this down where you fold it an inch and a half and where it meets uh, at the edge and press it with your iron and it will permanently adhere and create a rod pocket for you to use with your flagpole. So what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to use my hem tape and I'm going to create a pocket on both of our uh, flags that we're going to create today. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is mark for my rod pocket. Now, ordinarily, I would flip down this side with the tag because I don't want the tag to be hanging in the wind. But because this particular placemat has the blemish here, I'm going to fold down this part as my rod pocket. So what I'm going to do actually first is cut this off and remove the tag. Now that that's done, I am going to fold this over an inch and a half and I'm just going to use my grid here on the table and an inch and a half would be here. So once I fold it down to this line, then that makes for my rod pocket. Let me grab some pins and we will pin this in place. All right, I'm gonna put another here for good measure. All right, so now that our rod pocket is pinned in place, and that looks a little bit off, so I'm gonna Pull that down just a smidge. Now I need to determine where my design is going to go on this flag. All right, so let us measure first how tall this is. So it's almost 16 inches. Halfway would be eight. To mark my line, I'm actually going to use a pilot friction pin. And the pilot friction pin, um, it dissolves with heat. It's also erasable. It's an erasable pen. But if I run a warm iron over it, the ink disappears. Now you can use that at your own caution. I have not had any issues with this ink reappearing or not disappearing completely. So use that at your own caution uh, when doing your projects. So now we need to mark the center the opposite way. So here we have, it's a 12 inch placemat. So I'm gonna mark this in the center where the six is. So that gives me a good basis of where my embroidery design is going to go dead center in the middle of this placemat. So now that I have this marked, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mark the blue one as well. So here is our blue placemat. And as I mentioned earlier, this is the side that I am going to fold over because the tag is there. So again, I want to fold it over an inch and a half, roughly. Now it doesn't have to be exactly an inch and a half, but that's uh, a perfect size for a rod pocket. So now that our center is marked on our blue flag and our center is marked with our yellow flag, 
we need to go ahead and get these ready for applying our designs. So this one, as I mentioned, was going to be embroidery. What I'm going to do is use my large magnetic hoop and we're going to put a design here in the middle. On this one, I don't need a hoop. I just need my design. We're gonna cut out our design and then apply it to our flag with the heat press. Being that this flag is going to be outside in the weather, it's not gonna be worn or anything like that. And I'll probably only use it for a season. I'm just going to use a really lightweight tear away behind this flag. All right, so let's get that set up, move this out of the way. And as I mentioned, I'm going to use my totally awesome magnetic hoop, which I absolutely love. So let's get this laid out. Just a piece of really lightweight tearaway stabilizer. And then I'm going to lay this in the hoop or on the hoop rather. Now being that it's magnetic and these pins are here, I want to be careful and move the pins a little further up. And there we have our hooped flag so for those of you who are four by four users as i showed you the four by four magnetic hoop option here's an example of how easily you can hoop your projects um, with your new magnetic hoop now this is a much larger version and as you see my stabilizer is a little puckered not that big of a deal because this is going to be torn away as we're done so now that i have this hooped um, I'm going to put this on the embroidery machine, get it good and centered, and then we will, as this stitches out, work on cutting out a design for our vinyl flag. I found the font that I want, so I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop on the machine. All right, and let's pull up our font. Now, the design that I'm going to use is a monogram design from Designs by Little B. And there's a link in the description below for this particular font where you can purchase it. Excellent font she has there. So let's hit set because that's what we want. And what I'm going to do is get our design centered. It's off just a little bit, so I'm going to adjust it just a smidge and actually I need to rotate it because the flag is going the opposite direction. So let's rotate that. Now I need to center it and it's still in the right place. So there we go. Let's get this started. Then we can move to the computer and work on our design that we're going to cut out. All right, I chose a split monogram, the letter M and family name Morrison for our design. So let's load the black heat press vinyl into the Cricut machine and we will go ahead and press go. That way this can be cutting out while we wait on the flags embroidery to finish on our yellow flag. And then we can weed this and press it to our blue flag. Our flag just finished and I have the vinyl cutting out over there on the Cricut. Here is our flag. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the hoop. And what we'll do at this point is go ahead and take the stabilizer off of the back. Remember it's tear away so it just pulls right off. And I'll show you the back here in a moment. All right, and here is the back of our flag embroidery and there is the front. So let's go ahead and put the stitch witchery up here and create our rod pocket so that we can go ahead and hang our flag. I already have the flag that we're putting the vinyl on over here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on now. I'm going to take this end off and put that in place. 
and I'm going to line up the end of this hem tape right at the end of where we're folding it over. Give it a good press. And as you see, it's thick, so, or too thick for the heat. So I'm gonna take this steam off. Really shouldn't be using hem tape with steam anyway. And our vinyl just finished for this flag. There we go. Now it's down. So we'll take this pin out and this pin and line that up against the edge. And I'm going to tear that off. And now I am pressing the rest of it down, giving it some nice firm pressure, but allowing the heat to seep through the layers and fuse that glue strip down. Now I have my heat press on and I very well could have used the heat press with this as well. But since some of you may not have a heat press, I wanted to show how easy it was with an iron to create a rod pocket with our hem tape. All right, that is glued down. And now our flag is ready and I still see the marks for my vinyl. So I'm gonna set that to the side. You don't wanna apply heat to where you have your marks if you haven't applied the vinyl yet because that will make that mark disappear. And I'm gonna grab this, I made it fall. And we're going to do our yellow flag now. And I'm gonna take this off first. And again, line it up with the very edge of the fold flap. You don't want it up at the top of the fold. You want it down here along the bottom edge of that line. And so now we're going to, again, apply some light pressure, firm heat. And I do have my iron turned all the way up as hot as I can to make sure it gets hold to this glue. Let's see, there we go. I'll take that pin out and now this pin. And line this up and tear that off. And now we'll glue the rest of it down. So this is not a difficult project at all, depending upon which route you want to take and how you're going to apply your design. It's easily achievable to get a really cute flag completely for the most part from Dollar Tree with the exception of the design that you're putting on the front. All right, so we have created our rod pocket. So we'll be able to slide this onto the flag pole. And I'm going to apply heat to the front of this, which is where the um, I use the pin to mark my center. And the center is now gone. That pin mark is now gone. All right. 
no line at all in the center of that flag. And we'll set this to the side. And now what we'll do is grab the vinyl for this. And it's right here on the Cricut. So here is our design. And I just cut a generic name out as I showed in the Cricut video. or well, the design space video. And so now we're going to weed this out of the vinyl. And now that our design has been weeded out of the vinyl, we're going to place it on the flag where we want it to be situated. And now we'll press it on the heat press. And here is our vinyl garden flag. So now that both of our flags are done, let's hang them and see how they look. Our flags have been created. So it was not a difficult task at all. Here is the rod pocket across the top. And what you do is slide the hook through the rod pocket and you wanna feed it through. laying it out flat sideways to make it easier to slip through uh, the pocket. And once it slides on, you have a flag. So how cute did these turn out to be? Absolutely gorgeous. They were easy to make, not difficult at all. And the base materials come from Dollar Tree. So there are many different ways that you can create your own flag. It doesn't have to be embroidery or vinyl. As I mentioned before, it can be bling. It can be um, marker. It can be paint, craft paint. There's a number of ways you can make your own garden flag from the Dollar Tree and they have several different placemat options available that you can choose from. So keep your eyes open for the perfect placemat so that you can create your own garden flag from Dollar Tree. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.